But this next Amazon story is actually going to surprise you even more. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh -oh. click on it, Willie, dude. Amazon is opening a hair salon. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Can, when is it? Uh, you know, never mind. Uh -oh. Amazon is opening a hair salon in London. Its latest push uh, uh. from online to brick and mortar and a move that allows it to collect more real world consumer data in the meantime. The e-commerce giant is opening a new tech heavy hair salon in partnership with a prominent UK stylist. The salon will include tablets at every chair, a screen to virtually try on hair colors, hmm. and a station to display information about different products when a customer physically points at them. Uh. The salon is only open to employees to start a traditional Amazon strategy. Hmm. So Amazon employees get to be the beta testers for it. And as I mentioned, Amazon, very interested in your biometrics, whether it's scanning your hand, making you a custom T-shirt. Yeah. I don't know if we, were we talking about that previously. I That's another know. area. They want all your dimensions. Oh. They I, want all of you. I'm interested in that, like, aspect. They'll do that for you right now. They'll make you wow. the cheapest custom T-shirt you're going to find. Wow. Yeah. Tailored, you're saying. Oh, beyond that. I mean, I'm talking 3D. They'll create a 3D scan of you. You will become wow. a video game character. Wow. Uh, sort of and then avatar. that's cool. And then this is another stage where it's like uh, people get to try on these looks. They get to figure this out. I mean, you can imagine eventually. I don't know. Can you? I don't know. They would probably map out your whole body, and then like you can customize what you're wearing, hair color. Why are they interested in this? What do you think? I put this in the same realm as biometrics, understanding the full picture on an individual customer because you, we already talked about this earlier you're saying you got all these packages coming to your door mm -hmm. will you do saying i'm prime for life mm -hmm. they're just trying to fill in the data gaps mm. like what don't we have right we got everything we got your dog food we got your toothpaste yeah, we got they, your they got a robust profile what else everybody. we need okay what are your dimensions okay what else what do you want your hair color to be okay what else uh what does your palm look like where are you doing over when you physically go to grocery store what are your hopes and dreams? <laughs> I mean, people, people's hair says a lot about who they are. And so it's one thing that you customize it's an a lot. It's an intimate, it's also an intimate, personal, like how many people have or have had a chance to have that information yeah. to actually database that intel and do any, do something with it. Uh, if they can better understand your routine, they can sell you hair, they can sell you hygiene products. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. They can target hygiene products. They can hit you with like a subscription in the salon for the shampoo or whatever they're using that there's, you like. You there's know? also certain ways in which, I mean, in this again, you just adjust your mindset a little bit. You say, okay, if they're, uh, if they're a personal information data collection company, personalized data collection company, then you have to have all there's certain types of data collection that require a real world brick and mortar mm -hmm. that yeah. just there are these experiences that people have in brick and mortar that there still isn't a virtual equivalent for yeah and and the salon is definitely one of them or the barber like i miss the barber too since man. the covid kind of my own since hair. the covid stuff yeah people all of a sudden start to appreciate the the barbershop the salon yeah the yeah. Sal salon more than the barbershop oh yeah yeah it's an intimate thing. You have your own barber, you know. There's but, no virtual equivalent right now. Okay, but let me just say this, though. This has a connotation to it. Like, I think that even Amazon Basics, to me, have kind of a connotation to it. I don't, they're not the most, uh, they don't invoke a feeling of quality and reliability. So if, like, your wife or your girlfriend or, or whoever, your partner, comes to you and go like, oh, I just got my hair cut at the Amazon salon. But if you look What's at the... What's your... In, what are you... Like, ooh, are you like... Huh? But that's why they partnered with prominent stylists, right? Right, they right, right. they They do the X, they do the collab. Right, And right. then if you look at the products on the shelf, it's all high profile. Look at the ratings on the screen. They So so they better be pumping out. Oh, I see. You see, that's all third-party products, but where are I you going to get them from? Imagine how big is the business in the salon if... A, a customer decides, here's a product I'm going to use on my hair yeah. permanently. Mm -hmm. What is the lifetime business of that? Oh, man. dippity do. You know what I'm saying? Do, We're still talking do da about day. It. We're still talking about it. Do-da-day. My-oh-my. They should have called it 
Emma Salon. Wow. That's a home run you know? right there. That reminds me of salami for some reason. <laughs> Delicious. Emma <laughs> salami. Yeah. Take my, I'll have an Emma salami sandwich. <laughs> I think that there's an opportunity for them in the sandwich game now too. Yeah. So who knows? It could just be completely experimental and uh, eventually lead to nothing. Um, or it could be part of a much bigger strategy. It could be the type of thing where they only have to open three or four to feel like they got a big enough sample size to make some key decisions on the software side for their product. You don't know what it is they're trying to extract. There's always more to the story. Yeah, anything scary. And a big swing and a bold move. 